Okay, so we're going to do the basic shirt collar foundation. This is on page 181 in your books. Um, so to start with, you do need your front and back bodice. And the first thing is to measure our center back neck and record that measurement. So here we are. Okay, I get two inches. I'm gonna write that here. Our, my center back neck is two inches. And now I also wanna um, write my center front neck. Looks like mine is two and three eighths. Um, measure yours, don't just use my measurements because a lot of times when I print out these slopers, depending on the printer, sometimes they scale them bigger and smaller. And then also the different versions of our books, I've noticed that they've come bigger and smaller. So make sure you measure yours because you might actually get a different measurement than what I have. Um, okay, they want me to add it up and write the total. So two plus two is four, and then we have three eighths left over. Great. Okay, so figure one, we're gonna square a line in the center of the page. Um, mark and label the following locations. Okie dokie. Okay, so A to B, they want three inches. Um, I am working on half scale, so what is half of three inches? It is an inch and a half. Um, so this will be A and B. B to C, they want my total neck measurement, which um, I measured the half scale, so I don't have to do any math with that. So that's gonna be four and three eighths. And then B to D is gonna be um, center back to shoulder, mark for notch. Okay, well, my center back was two inches, so maybe I mark it two inches. Hmm. Okay, D. So this right here is my center back. This will be my shoulder notch. And this is my center front right there. Okay, figure two. Square a line up from C. So to square it, I make sure that the line I already drew lines up on my ruler so I'll get a perfect 90 degree angle. Mark E half an inch up from C. So I'm on the half scale, so what is half of half an inch? Half an inch, it would be one fourth. Draw a curved line from E blending with D. So blending to D. There we go. Square a line from A passing one inch or more from our guideline C. So I guess I'll do half an inch since we're on the half scale. Okay, we'll go some squaring a line. And here's six, so half an inch would be right here. Uh, I'm gonna call that F. Okay, 
draw a line from E to F. Draw a green line and cut the collar from the paper. Now, if you read this chapter, it talks about grain lines on the collar and that you can actually cut it on the straight grain. You can cut it on the cross grain or you can cut it on the bias line. Um, it's up to you, so read about that. Okay, so now we are gonna jump over to page 182 and we're going to draft the under collar. So when we sew our collar, we don't want raw edges around it. So if we sew it to an under collar, that gets rid of our under edge, our raw edges. And um, our under collar also is a little bit smaller, so that way we won't see our seams on the edges of our collar. It should hopefully make our fabric kind of roll so the seam is underneath it and you, you don't really see it while you're wearing your garment. Um, okay, so step one is to trace our upper collar, which I have right here. Oh, maybe I should actually label it. This is my upper collar. Okay, um, this is cheating. Can I trace it? Oh yeah, I can trace it. <laughs> I know I need to cut it out. I just haven't cut it out yet. Okay, so I traced my collar. Um, now I'm gonna trim an eighth inch, and we are not gonna switch to half scale. We will use one eighth inch, okay? Um, so trim one eighth inch and more for bulky fabrics. We're just gonna use muslin, so we'll stick with one eighth inch. Square a short line at center back and gradually draw the line to zero at the collar point. So they want it one eighth inch below where our center back is. That's just one of the boxes, one eighth inch, and they kind of just want this to blend to our collar point right here. And then this gets shaven away and tossed. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, that's, that's it, that's your under collar, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my grain line and I'm gonna write that it is my under collar. Um, this is our fold, probably should have mentioned that. Same over here, this is our fold. Oh, I forgot to label my notches. This is our notch, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so now this is ready for a test fit. In order to do a test fit, you will have to also cut out your front and back um, bodice. You have something to sew it to. And let's see how this guy looks. Okay, I just want to talk a little bit about how to sew this together. Um, I went ahead and I sewed closed my darts and I sewed my bodice together. Um, and so I can flip it out. Um, of course, I just realized eh, I sewed my dart the wrong way, darn it. So I can take out my shoulder seam and my side seam and flip them. Or I could probably just redo the darts. I bet you redoing the darts would be way quicker and just sew them. So they go on the inside. Oh, mistakes, awesome. But anyways, um, you'll sew the bodice together and then you'll also sew your underlining collar to your collar and the underlining one should be a little bit shorter than the collar, hopefully. Um, and one tip of sewing collars is that when I got close to my corner, um, I changed my stitch length to be shorter. So I started with like a two and a half, three, but then when I was about half an inch around the corner, I changed it to a one. So it's a super small stitch and that's supposed to help get it to be a bit sharper. 
And then I did a pivot turn when I turned, so my needle was in the down position and I lifted up my foot and I was able to spin this guy on my needle and then put the foot back down and then continue sewing. And then about half an inch, I changed my stitch length back to like two and a half or three, so it wouldn't take me forever to get to the other side. Um, and then once you do that, you can actually cut off some of your seam allowance as well. Um, and that will help it when you go now to turn it. Hopefully it'll be a little sharper. You may want to find a stick or some kind of tool to help you kind of push through the corner um, so you get as sharp as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and take this to the iron. I'm going to see how sharp I can get it. Um, and then after I do that, I'm going to sew my underlining to my shirt. And you know, another thing I did that I kind of forgot to mention was that when I sewed my underlining collar to the collar, I didn't, I only sewed on my sew line. So right here is seam allowance. I didn't sew straight down through my seam allowance. I left my seam allowance free um, and I started my sew line at the actual sew line. Um, that way, after I flip it and I go to sew um, my underlining collar around my neck, um, I won't accidentally sew my collar. I can kind of bend my collar out of the way and I can line up all my raw edges and then sew along um, all the way around the neck um, yeah, without getting my collar. And then after I sew my underlining, that'll flip up and then I'll just like flip down my collar. Um, I think I'll go sew my underlining. I'm gonna iron it, sew my underlining to my garment and I'll come back and show you how I flip it. Okay, so I sewed the underli underlining to the shirt. So now to sew the collar, I'm just gonna turn up the seam allowance. I'm gonna iron it, the raw edge under and then I'm just gonna cover it here. And as long as my fold covers this little stitch line, just barely, then I can actually stitch right inside the seam and it will catch it. Or I can get a hand needle and hand stitch it down too, whichever you prefer. So that way it's nice and clean and finished. Okay, so I finished sewing the collar on and this is a convertible collar, so I have the option to button up my garment to the top and my collar will just sit all cute at the top. Or if the wearer wants to unbutton their shirt a little bit, they can kind of leave it open and that's another look as well. This is what's called the convertible collar. So there's kind of a little roll back here. I kind of rolled it on itself. And if you're looking at this and asking why is there a pleat here, I don't know if you guys noticed but I did not add seam allowance around my neck. So because of it, my back neck was too long. Um, so that was a little error I made. I wonder if anybody caught that. Um, so I fixed it for the sake of the notebook sample by just adding a pleat. But obviously if this was a garment I was actually gonna wear, I'd have to go back and recut that pattern piece and add the seam allowance around the neck. Um, but anyways, yeah, this is it. This is what we're looking for.